Welcome to our Holy Week devotion dito po sa ating church na Rebuild City Church. It's Friday, Bierne Santo po. Alam nyo, nakasanayan natin, di ba? Growing up, bawal magsaya. Dahil sabi nga nung iba, patay daw ang Diyos. Naalala ko nung maliit pa ako, bawal maglaro kasi baka masugatan ka, hindi raw gagaling. Ano na, yung mga nakalakha natin ng mga kaugalian, pamahiin, di ba? Bawal magpork, di ba? Kaya yung mga nanay at tatay natin, or even kay siguro ngayon, Uh, puro isda lang, di ba? And maraming establishments close po during this time dahil Biyernes Santo nga, parang it's time na magmuni-muni, maraming, ay, even casinos, alam ko, sarado pag ganito mga panahon, mga visita, iglesia, and all. Naalala ko nung panahon pa ni Doc June, <laughs> yung uh, Ten Commandments lang daw napapanood nila. Hindi ko naman alam yun dahil Netflix days na ako, no? Nung daw panahon ni Doc June, yung TV, yung nililipat pa ng channel na ganun, Ten Commandments lang napapanood nila, yung kay Charles Heston. Hindi ko na po kilala yun, nakikwento lang sa akin ni Doc June. Ano? Isa lang ang napapanood nila pag Holy Week, pag Bierne Santo sa TV. Ano? Parang sampung oras siya tayo dahil Ten Commandments, Ten Hours. Pero ang tanong ko lang, bakit pa siya tinawag na Good Friday in the first place? What's good about that Friday? Di ba dapat Bad Friday or Sacrificial Friday? Imagine nyo nyo kasi ano, kung nandun ka nun that specific Friday. Right? Picture nyo lang, ipikit nyo mata nyo, nandong ka nung biyernes na yon, ang daming crowds, maingay, they're shouting one, uh, we want Barabbas, yung iba naman, crucify him, and, and ang dami, may mga lying witnesses, may greedy politicians na nakapaligid. So pag tinignan mo, meron dong isang tao uh, na, na supposed to be, sabi nila, yung savior, pero nilalatigo, hinahagupit, strip naked, may mga sharp thorns na ilalagay sa ulo niya, may mga pako. So parang nandun yung mga disipulo, nilaglag siya. Nung nasa cross na siya, kinukutya siya ng dalawang magnanakaw sa tabi niya. Yung grieving mom niya, yung nanay niya, nandun sa baba, iyak ng iyak, confused sa mga disciples, may malakas na earthquake, darkness falls. Grabe, ano kaya good dun sa Friday na yon at pinaka-worst? Yung supposed savior nila just died. All right? Yung tinayaan nila ng pag-asa, yung taong supposed to be mag-aahon sa kanila, sa hirap na dinaranas sa kamay ng mga Romano, eh namatay. Parang wala na nga yatang good sa biyernes na yon ano? Kasi po, any news about death eh, is always bad news. Right? Nalala ko lang yung isang doktor. Again, kwento lang naman to. No? Nalala ko isang doktor, sabi niya sa isang pasyente one time, um, meron ako sa yung good news at bad news. Ano mag gusto mo na? Sabi ng pasyente, Dok naman, kahapon lang magkausap tayo, hindi mo pa sinabi sa akin. Sabi niya, sige Dok, sabi mo na sa akin yung good news. Sabi ng doktor, Delphine, you have only 24 hours to live. <laughs> Pag ikaw yung good news na ba yun? May mas worse pa ba doon? Sabi ng doktor, nakasal- <laughs> kalimutan ko sabihin sa'yo kahapon. <laughs> ano ba yun, di ba? Kaya ilang oras ka na lang, wala na, 10, okay? Nine. <laughs> But the point is, death is generally, pag nareceive mo, is bad news. Because death equals defeat. Right? Natalo ka ng cancer, natalo ka ng sakit. And death is equal to an end. Right? And, and let's talk about a bit about death. Kailan po ba siya unang na-mention sa Bible? Well, it was first mentioned as a consequence to disobedience. Sabi sa Genesis 2.17, You must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly, there's a word, die. So the first time this word was mentioned is a consequence, it's a warning to disobedience to God. Kasi po, God created the world. 
na lahat ang ganda. Everything is beautiful. Everything is in order because He's a God of order, of course, not of chaos. He sets boundaries, standards to His creation. And, and even though may dominion siya over all His creation, He delegated that dominion to His special creation, yung human beings, right? Huwag ka maniwalang galing ka sa unggoy, okay? So, galing ka kay Lord. Kinrate ka ng, ng Diyos, okay? So, He created this man, this human, in His image and likeness. Unlike animals, na guided by instincts, Ito pong tao, tayo, we're blessed with beauty, with creativity, with ability. In fact, we are to live throughout eternity. We are eternal beings. Yun po yung kakaiba sa atin sa pagkakakrate ni God uh, compared to all His creations. And we are created with a body, soul, and spirit. Pag sinabi natin spirit, that's the divine breath of life. The spirit in man is the part that can commune directly with God. Okay? Kaya tayo na di-disconnect nga kay God because of sin, spiritual po yun. We are disconnected, spiritually speaking. Kaya in 1 Corinthians 2.14, talking about we as spiritual beings, sabi doon, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness to him, nor, nor can he, sabi dito, know them because they are spiritually discerned. So when we are in sin, we are living in sin, we are spiritually disconnected. To God. Kaya po pag naborn again ng tao, we are reborn, revitalized, pagka po yung spirit natin kumunek kay God. Then the soul. Yung soul naman po is the seat of personality natin. The soul represents our individuality. Yung mind natin, yung will, yung emotion, yung po yung soul. And then the third part is our physical body, the physical vessel. The body is the material substance that interacts with the physical world. Kaya po pag tininan mo, Bakit nung sinabi kay God, you're gonna die? Pero hindi naman sila namatay physically. They died instantaneously, spiritually. Na-disconnect sila kay God. They were cast out of the Garden of Eden. Tama? So when God warned Adam and Eve, wag yung kainin yan kasi you're gonna die. Okay? They died spiritually. Alright? Kaya nga unang reaction nila, ano? Nagtago agad kay God. Meron agad fear, may shame. Right? Then, then nagkasisihan na, blame game na. Tapos pride sets in. Kasi feeling ni Adam, we can become like God, di ba? Sayabang nga ni Adam, pinalitan niya yung pangalan ng woman into Eve, which means, we're not gonna die. The word Eve means the mother of all the living. Kumbaga, sinasabi ni Adam, uh, we, we, we're not gonna die. Right? In fact, I'm gonna rename my wife the mother of all the living. Talaga ba? A few years down the road, nagpapatayan na yung mga anak nila. Few verses down the road, it's a roster of dead people. Because this obedience to God is very, very costly. Ano po sabi sa Bible? For the wages of sin is death. That's why death is bad news. Eh, Jeff, <laughs> bakit nga naging good news? but naging good Friday? Eh, namatay nga si Jesus. Ano ba maganda sa pagkamatay ni Jesus? Yan po pag-uusapan natin ngayon, alright? So, very short po lang po itong devotion natin. Uh, we're gonna look at, why is it a good Friday? Alright? Well, first of all, what if I tell you that it is the will of God for Jesus to die? So, point number one, God planned it. What? Pinlano ng Diyos yung pagkamatay ng anak niya? Of course. Tinanong nyo, pag binasa nyo sa 1 Corinthians 2.8, may little phrase doon na pag na-miss out nyo, baka ma-miss out nyo itong bakit good itong Friday. When Paul was talking to the rulers of the world, all right, who didn't understand God's wisdom, sabi, if they had, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Sinabi rin sa, sa verse na yon, if they had known, kung alam lang nila, Hindi dapat nila pinako sa krus ang Diyos. Kung alam lang sana ni Pontius Pilate, kung alam lang sana ng mga religious leaders, kung alam lang sana ng mga usisero na sumisigaw na crucify Him, kung alam lang nila na plano talaga to ng Diyos, dapat hindi nila pinatay si Jesus. In Acts 2 verse 23 sa NLT version, But God knew what would happen. And he and His prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. Right? So, Jesus' death was not an accident. As if it happened because yung event suddenly span out of control. No, 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 no. Hindi yung tipong, ano nangyari? Ang usapan lang natin, 
ipalalatigoin la si Jesus ah. eh but kailangan patayin ngayon no 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 hindi po ganoon nangyari in Acts chapter 4 verse 27 again in NLT version in fact this has happened here in this very city for Herod Antipas Pontius Pilate the governor the Gentiles the people of Israel were all united against Jesus your holy servant whom you anointed and verse 28 but everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. This is the prayer of the early Christians. Lahat na itong nangyari na to, sabi nila kay God, predetermined na to according to your will. Si Jesus po namatay according to God's prearranged plan. And He could not have died otherwise. Another verse na gusto kong matutunan natin, in Isaiah, Isaiah 53.10. Yet it was the Lord's will okay, to crush him. He has put him to grief when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Ang hirap naman na itong lunukin, Pastor Jeff. It was the Father's will to crush his son. Parang alabo naman. Yes, it's written. It was the Lord's will to crush him. Pinlano na niya ang pagdanak ng dugo ng kanyang anak sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Actually, nakita na natin to sa Garden of Eden pa lang, itong plano na to na nag-roll out. Okay? Pag tinignan niyo to, di ba diniskartya ni Eva at Adan yung pagtatago ng shame and guilt nila. Remember? na nagkasala na sila, they, they sued the fig leaves. Okay? Nagtahi sila ng dahon para itapal dun sa katawan nila uh, dahil nga they now realize they were naked. And then God did something, di ba? God needed to shed the blood of an innocent animal para makagawa si God ng tela, yung garment of skin, pamalit dun sa dahon na tinali, tinahi ni Eva at Adan. Yung pong hudyat ng pag-roll out ng plano ng Diyos. Because one day, the perfect lamb will be sent into the world by the Father. Favorite verse mo yan, John 3.16. Alright? So once and for all, shed His own blood as a ransom for many. Once and for all, to cover our shame and guilt. So point number one, it was God's plan, right? For Jesus to die. Number two, Jesus came to fulfill it. Wow! Dumating daw si Jesus dito sa lupa to fulfill the will of the Father. In Hebrews 10.5, sinabi dito, Consequently, when Christ came into the world, He said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. Verse 6, in burnt offerings and sin offerings you have not taken pleasure. And verse 9, sabi ni Jesus, then he added, behold, I have come to do your will. So see, Jesus was talking about a body prepared for me. And then sabi niya, I come to do your will. You see, the primary reason why Jesus came, right, to die for our sins is to do the will of the Father. Grabe, no? Bakit? Ano ba yung will ng Father? Well, makita natin yung puso ng Diyos sa 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, God is patient with you. Naintindihan po ba natin to? Si God daw, pasensyoso sa atin. Because He doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Ang galing ng verse na to. Ito po, nabibigay ito ng pag-asa. Ikaw na nanonood ngayon, na parang feeling mo, wala na akong pag-asa. Wala na to. Hindi, hindi na ako pagbibigyan ng Diyos. Malabo na ako mahalin ng Diyos. No, 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 that's not true. This verse is saying, He is patient with you. He doesn't want you to go to hell. Gusto ka niyang mag-repent to come to Him. So that you and, and, and God will be together in eternity. In another garden po, this time naman sa Garden of Gethsemane, ang sabi ni Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. You, know, you can see here, yung play po nung mag-ama, no? the Father sent the Son, the Son came para po i-fulfill yung will ng Father, that not, that, 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 that not one will perish, but sana, okay, everyone will come to repentance. Kaya po sabi ni J.C. Ryle, okay, sabi niya, he did not die because he could not help it. He did not suffer because he could not escape. Okay, talking about Jesus, ano? Lahat po ng soldiers of Pilate's army could not have taken him if he had not been willing to be taken. They could not have hurt a hair of his head if he had not given them permission. So, 
when Jesus died on that cross, it was not an afterthought sa plano ni God. Parang hindi pwede sabihin ni God, sandali, mukhang tumindi ah. Ang usapan, yung dalawa lang ang mapapako sa krus na magnanakaw ah. Hindi ganun yun. His death was the plan, right? Yun po yung plano ng Diyos. Kaya another verse to uh, uh, support this, that it was Jesus' decision, it's His will as well, to die on that cross, to do the will of the Father. John 10 verse 18, No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily. For I have the authority to lay it down when I want to, and also to take it up again. Very evident po rito sa John chapter 10 na verse na to, I sacrifice it voluntarily. Hindi si Jesus na tipong, ayan na, na-overpower na si Jesus ng mga Romano. Ayan, kasi nagpakis ka kay Judas, ikaw ngayon yung napiling ipako sa krono. No, 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 no. It was all planned. And Jesus was just merely executing the plan that God has for him. Pero wait. Ginawa ba ito ni Jesus na napipilitan lamang siya? Malungkot ba siya nung sinasakatuparan niya to? Feeling mo ni Jesus, nalugi ko dito ah. Naichepuera ba siya sa humility na pinakita niya sa pagkamatay sa krus? Hindi po. Hebrews 12.2 For the joy set before him. Talking about Jesus. He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Alam niyo po, a little bit about crucifixion. It was invented by the Persians na perfect po ng mga Romans. Ang, ang crucifixion po, it's the slowest way to die and it's the most painful way to die. Napakabagal po mamatay sa krus. Pag pinako ka sa krus, papako ka rin sa kamay and even doon sa paa. When you want to inhale, <gasps> ikikerry ng buong body mo yung weight, excruciating pain. Pag nag-exhale ka, ah, <sighs> excruciating pain. So, in, out, in, out po ng breath mo. Pain, pain, pain lang nagpapalitan. And oftentimes, dinagawa to sa along major highways because it's a billboard of the Romans, don't mess with us. Yan ang ending nyo pag kinalaban nyo kami. Grabe. And, and, and they were stripped naked. Naubutubad po pagka po talaga pinapako sa krus para hindi pa marisan. And sabi dito, there was a joy set before Christ. Ha? Huh? You know what? Jesus did it willingly and joyfully. Because alam niya, I'm gonna please the Father. I am doing the will of the Father. That's why it's a joy before Him. Question, have you endured long enough? Have you even parang uh, uh, withstand shame for the sake of the cross? Have you suffered long enough just to please the Father. Kasi po minsan, we're either pleasing the Father or pleasing someone else. Pleasing God or pleasing the world. And minsan, di na malaman ni Lord, sino ka ba talaga? Sino ba pinipleas mo? We're wearing a lot of hats. Ang dami natin pinipleas. I hope and pray we'll, 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 we'll lead uh, like the way Jesus led His life. The joy set before Him. He endured and, and scorned the shame of the cross. And, bo- uh, and the ending, he is now sitting na- down at the right hand of God. You know what? He emerged as victor. Yeah, may paghirap siya, pero kinaya ni Jesus. He knew it's all worth it because he's gonna please the Father. May mga area pa ba sa buhay natin na hindi pa fully surrendered kay Lord? Ikaw na nanonood ngayon. Anong area ng buhay mo na you keep on pleasing other people? Piniplease mo yung boss mo. Piniplease mo yung boyfriend mo. Even to the point you're practicing sexual immorality. Piniplease mo kasi siya, baka mawala siya, hindi ka na magustuhan. So even premarital sex, pinagbibigyan mo siya. Really? Are we pleasing anyone else except God? Are we pleasing everyone except our God? Piniplease mo yung boss mo kahit mali. Right? Piniplease mo and you compromise uh, uh, your faith, you compromise your integrity para ma-please yung boss mo, para ma-promote. Piniplease ba natin yung parents natin even though mali yung kanilang pinapagawa sa inyo? Piniplease mo ba asawa mo kahit alam mong you've, you're compromising? Who are you pleasing na nagiging displeasing kay Lord? 
Be careful because we're here for the audience of one. The Bible says in everything you do, do it all for the glory of God. We only give God the glory in everything you do. So question, may mga area pa ba sa buhay natin na hindi pa fully surrendered kay Lord? Maybe ngayon po yung perfect time, isn't it? Alright, Holy Week ngayon, Pierne Santo, magmuni-muni tayo. Lord, sino ba'y kailangan kong patawarin? Kasi piniplease ko yung sarili ko. Kaya hindi ko siya pinapatawad. Lord, sino ba dapat kong hinga ng tawad sa mga pagkakataon na to? Sino ba, Lord, yung dapat kong pakitaan ng kabutihan? So, may mga area pa ba sa buhay natin na hindi pa fully surrendered kay, kay God? So, let's end this. Ano ang good sa Good Friday? Number one, God planned it to happen. The reason why it's a Good Friday because God planned it to happen. Number two, Jesus came to fulfill it. All right? Jesus came to fulfill the plan of God for him to die. And lastly, we all benefited from it. Gabi, no? Ginawa nung mag-ama ng father and son, tapos tayo nag-benefit. Isaiah 53.6 All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. I love this verse. If you want to go to heaven, pay attention to this verse. It begins and ends with the word all. I-type nyo nga dyan, all. Tinan nyo, balikan nyo yung verse. Isaiah 53.6. Ang simula, all we like sheep. And then the ending, the iniquity of us all. Lahat daw po tayo ay ligaw na tupa. All right? And, and we have turned away from God. And here's the thing. The Lord has laid on Christ, on Jesus, lahat ng kasalanan natin. The Lord laid on Jesus all sins of all people. Even from the time ng, ni Adama. Kaya unless na gets mo to, in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. We all sinned. Wala pong pinanganak na morally neutral. Wala pong pinanganak na walang kasalanan. When Adam and Eve sinned, lahat na po ng pinanganak are all tainted with sin. The Bible says, through one man, sin entered the world. The first Adam. And of course, through the second Adam, He came to redeem us from sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21, before we end, God made Him who had no sin to be seen for us. For what purpose? So that in Him, we might become the righteousness of God. Look up on this verse. God made Him who had no sin. Ginawa daw ng Diyos itong walang kasalanan na si Jesus na maging makasalanan. He was cursed so that you will be blessed. I will be blessed. He was made sinful so that we can become sinless because no one will enter the presence of God na unrighteous. Ang ganda ng verse, so that we might become, alright, na magiging righteousness of God. We used to be unrighteous in the eyes of God. Now, we, are, we have become righteous because we are hidden in Christ. One of my favorite verses, Colossians 3.3, 3, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So when God looks at me, nasa na yung Jeff na makasalanan? Check ko nga, loko-loko to nung araw ah. Yeah, hindi mo na ako makikita God. I am hidden with Christ. Right? I accepted the finished work of Christ by faith. So I no longer live. Sabi, for you died and your life now is hidden with Christ. And though tayo po ay makasalanan because of that atonement that imputed righteousness. You can't earn that alone. It's given. It's free. It's a gift. Through the death of Jesus Christ, yung ating spirit na the disconnect kay God, now it's reconnected to God. Kaya pa pag na-born again ka, the spirit is the one being reconnected with God. Yung soul, medyo makulit tong soul, ito yung meron decision-making capability. All right? Ito yung nagdi-decide, susunod ba tao kay God o susundin ko tong nakasanayan ko na, na flesh? Ito namang body, let's say for example, na born again ka. 
Sabi ng spirit, oy, mag-quiet time ka. Sabi ng body, 30 years naman ako hindi nagbabasa ng Bible, ngayon mo pa ako kukulitin. And then si Saul, o ano ba, magbabasa ba tayo ng Bible o hindi? Eh, si Saul magdi-decide. Ah, uh, wag muna tayo magbasa ngayon. Okay, yung spirit ngayon, nagugutom. Kaya ang dami mga Christian, spiritually, uh, ano to, malnourished. Right? So do not grieve the Holy Spirit in you. So through Christ's sacrifice, our spirits, once deadened by sin, are reborn, reinvigorated, allowing for direct communion with God. So wag natin siyang pababayaan. Alright? Kaya po, be, 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 be thankful. Be grateful. Alright? Yan po ang dahilan kung bakit good ang Biyernes Santo. Why it is a good Friday because that's the start, alright, of your eternal life. When Jesus died on that cross 2,000 years ago, on the third day He rose again, then you and I have now the opportunity to become His child. Kung hindi po siya namatay, lahat tayo patay. If Jesus didn't choose to die, lahat tayo will suffer eternal death. This is a garden of Gethsemane. Kung hindi niya sinabi, your will be done, Father. Kung bumalik lang siya sa langit, all of us are eternally going to hell. That's why you have to offer your bodies holy and pleasing before God. That's your act of service. That's your act of worship. Father, I offer my body. It was once dead, but now it's alive. It's a sacrifice for you, living sacrifice. Every day po na ipapamuhay natin should be live for God's glory. Yan ang dahilan kung bakit good ang Bierne Santo. Amen? He planned for it. He, Jesus Christ came to fulfill it. And you and I greatly, eternally benefited from it. We're gonna do communion. And this time, mga tatay, ano? Okay? Ako muna ang maglilid as your pastor. Sa mga head of the family, I know you're so used to having communion na tayo-tayo lang kayo-kayo dyan sa bahay. But don't worry, you're gonna do that after this. But uh, for now, as your pastor, we're gonna partake communion all together. Ang pagsinabi pong communion, I have the bread with me and I have the juice. Alright? Na prepare nyo na po ba? Please go ahead and get your bread and your juice. We're going to break bread, okay? Uh, and sabi po sa 1 Corinthians 11.23, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night, He was betrayed. He took the bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Whenever we partake po ng bread, we are being reminded, yung katulad ng sinabi natin kanina, Jesus chose to die for us. Hindi siya nagdalawang isip. Hindi siya yung sa kanila pag mabait na sila. Hindi siya yung bumalik sa langit. Balik na lang ako 2025. Baka mababait na mga tao. Sa kanila lang ako mamamatay for them. No, 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 no. He did it willfully, wholeheartedly to please the Father. And in pleasing the Father, pave the way for our salvation. Kaya po, as we partake of the bread, we're being reminded, Lord, it's supposed to be my body ang nakapako doon sa krus o nabubulok at sinusunog sa impyerno. But because you died for my sins, I am now saved. I can now partake communion without hesitation. So as you partake of the bread, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your faithfulness endures forever. Maraming salamat, Lord, because when you choose to die on that cross 2,000 years ago, kami po ay nabiyayaan ng bagong pag-asa. At ngayon, Lord, kinocommemorate lang namin, nire-remember namin ang ginawa mo. Because apart from that, Lord, we are, we are to be pitied. Kakaawaan lang kami dahil sa impyerno rin ang buhay namin. So, Lord, salamat po sa iyong pagkamatay sa krus. Because of that, we can have eternal life. Let's partake of the bread. Verse 25, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Sabi po, Saltan and Diyos, without the shedding of the blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. 
Kaya po yung innocent animal that was killed during the time ni Ebat Adan, it's a foreshadowing of what Jesus had to do. He died, innocent as He is. He died, the perfect Lamb of God, shed His own blood so that you and me might be forgiven of sin. Again, kung kayo po yung communion I hope you're seeing the gravity kung bakit ka naligtas. It's costly. It costs the Father, His one and only Son. So wag mong, wag mong baby yung kasalanan. Wag mong uh, dinajustify yung kasalanan. Wag mong downplay yung kasalanan. Naiintindihan na to ni Lord, gusto ko sumaya. No, 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 no. He is so serious about dealing with sin, He gave His one and only Son. So please, whenever we partake communion, you are being reminded, your salvation is free, but it costs the giver so much. His one and only Son. Lord, we thank you for your blood that was, sh- that was spilled on the cross. Because of that, we are now saved. Dahil Panginoon, pinili mo na mamatay para sa aming kaligtasan. Lord, we'll be forever grateful. And as we partake of this juice, we're being reminded, Lord God, of your sacrifice, your atoning sacrifice para kami ay maligtas. And we'll be forever grateful for that. Lord, help us to be reminded every day whenever we're tempted na magkasala, ma-remind kami of this precious blood of yours na, 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 na nag-shed ka ng dugo mo sa kalbaryo para kami ay maligtas. Maraming salamat po. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake of the cup. All right. Thank you for joining us in our communion. Uh, before we end, uh, I just want you to discuss this uh, with your family members. Ano? I have a few discussion questions lang para sa inyo, para lalo pa nating maintindihan yung tinuro natin. I'm sure nag-take down kayo ng mga notes kanina, ng mga Bible verses. Pero kanina, sinabi ko sa Isaiah 53.10, uh, it speaks of God's intentionality in Jesus' sacrifice. So ito ang tanong ko, how does this shape our understanding of Jesus' role as the atoning sacrifice for our sins? Ano ba si Jesus? Pag tiningnan mo, Ah, para ba siyang genie? Pag may kailangan ako, dadasalan ko siya. Doon lang ba siya na, namatay para sa kapritsyo mo? <laughs> na gusto mong magkaroon ng bagong negosyo? Kasi minsan tumatawag tayo kay Jesus pag may kailangan tayo, di ba? Para gumaling ka sa sakit mo. And that's part of it, yeah. Pero ngayon na naintindihan mo yung role ni Jesus. That He suffered para mapagbayaran yung kasalanan na dapat ikaw at ako nagbabayad. How do you view now Jesus? Number two, how does it deepen our appreciation for the depth of God's love and grace? Ano yung mga pwede mong gawin ngayon dahil lumalim ang yung pag-appreciate sa pagmamahal ng Diyos, yung kanyang love and grace? How does it affect now the way you live your life? Katulad kanina tanong ko, ano yung mga bagay na dapat mo ngayong i-give up na? At he totally surrender sa kanya. Next question. Considering Jesus' decision that he laid down his life voluntarily, ang tanong ko, how does this illuminate the depth of his obedience to the Father's will? Alright? Pag tinignan mo itong tanong na to, okay, si God, si Jesus Christ, voluntarily, just to please the Father, binigay niya lahat. Ikaw. Alright? How does it inspire you to surrender our own will to God's purpose in our lives? Meron ka bang mga will na pinupush ngayon? May agenda ka ba na alam mong nagdalaban sa puso mo? Uh, Lord, alam kong hindi sa akin to, sa iyo to eh. O hindi sa iyo to, sa akin lang will to eh. Paano ngayon mangyayari doon? How will it affect your life? So again, let me leave you with those questions. And I hope you'll have a great time um, going through this uh, Biernes Santo. And tomorrow, uh, abangan nyo rin po yung uh, devotional namin for tomorrow. Doc June will share uh, a beautiful devotion po para po sa Sabado de Gloria na tinatawag. But for now, thank you so much for joining us in our Holy Week devotion. And may God continue to bless you and may God continue to, to reveal Himself to you. God bless you and enjoy the discussion question for your family.